welcome to the vlog. Today's vlog is all about the Asia, Asian otter, which is the noisiest animal in the entire of Edinburgh Zoo. So I hope you enjoy. Bye. Super smelly. Well, good afternoon, folks. We are starting with our talk, and just a couple of minutes, Alita's just popping in some food, and then she will join us and we'll get started with our talk. <laughs> 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 that's the end. <laughs> 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 it's a handover there, yeah. Oh dear, that's all my nightmares tonight. It's going to be bloody gibbons swinging, and the sounds of the otters. <laughs> But this species of otter, they are the smallest species of otter in the world, and these guys actually live in family groups. So here in our enclosure, they actually hold up to 25 in our group, and all of the young will help to look after the, the offspring. So mum and dad, by and little, will have the youngsters, and then all the brothers and sisters will chip in and they will help them to look at those young, move them around and keep them nice and safe as well. But I think you've got some tasty food to put in, haven't yeah. you? We're popping the food to get them to be a little bit more quiet. Mm -hmm. They're if drowning as well. Yeah. A little gap somewhere. Just a wee one. For a wander. Oh, they'll do. So if you have a good little smell, just now you might take a wee guess as to what I'm going to actually eat. So what have you actually got? Oh, so in here we've got <laughs> some clam meat, some mussels, crayfish, crab, maybe a bunch of kind of fishy, Lots fishy of things. Fishy things. Yeah. So yeah, these guys, they are carnivores, so their diet is not made up of meat and things like that. So in the wild, they're what we specifically call a piscivore. So a piscivore is a carnivore who put on these things which are fish based. So what they've got here is just a small variety, but in the wild they would hunt fish. They would also take amphibians and frogs and insects and things like that. It's an incredibly varied diet. But they've got a very high metabolism, so at least our keepers have to feed them regularly throughout the day. This is one of probably about six feeds that we get here. Because we've got a big group of otters, we really try to keep them all nice and entertained. So we do give them their food in lots of yeah. different ways. So these boxes are a perfect example of how we can enrich them. So we can hide that food in those boxes, make it a little bit more challenging for them, and it means that they're not just getting it on a plate, they're actually going to have to work for it, and then take their food, and then they actually have to earn it, basically. So it's just keeping them nice and busy. In the wild, they would actually look for food, and they've got very small little hands, and you quite often see otters playing around. So what they'll do is they can use rocks and things, and they're very good at tool use as well. In fact, or they're very clever. So what they will do, sometimes they will use rocks to crack open shells. And another thing which otters have learned to do in the wild is if you put a crab out in the sun, it will dry and heat, and the shell will crack open. And they have learned this, and they pass it on to other animals as well in the group. But you'll notice that our otters are very, very noisy. They're drowning as that. They're probably one of the noisiest animals here at the zoo. And they do a lot of communication through this, but they also communicate in another way as well, which is much smellier, don't they? Yes, they do. So they have something called scat, which is their, their poo, essentially. And you might see little kind of spots around their enclosure. So it's anywhere you can see kind of dried up scales, or little mounds of very kind of liquidy looking poo. Um, so they'll all use the same latrine, so they'll communal toilet together and they'll all poo one after the other, um, do a little dance, they kind of stomp it into the ground and that's a way of communicating within the group, so other members of their family, but also with other otter families or groups that might be in the area. Gives them information on the fact that there's otters around, there's a family already living there, what kind of food and resources are available and kind of how many individuals there might be. Yeah, so they all do it to do their little poo dance where they'll put their tail up in the air, wag their bum back and forward. And if you would like to see a close, I have got some in this little box here. Some people say it smells like jasmine, but I'm sure that at least would disagree with that statement. Pretty sure it's not jasmine, at least not, don't know what kind of jasmine that was. I think all keepers agree that otter poo might be the smelliest poo we have here at the zoo. Oh, it's sticky and it's very stinky. Yeah, so it's definitely one of the smelliest you will notice. But yeah, our enclosure here is perfectly similar because these guys will be found in rivers and estuaries. 
So this enclosure here is a very beautiful example of an art enclosure. It's actually one of my favorite enclosures here because it pretty much replicates the natural environment very, very accurately. So we've got our pool at the top, we've got our river system all the way down the bottom. And on either side, you've also noticed we've got these holes. So we've got these little metal boxes, which I'm sure you can tell you're incredibly smelly. So what do they do? What do they use these for? So those are kind of their their homes, so their beds. So they've got four in this enclosure, three with metal covers, and there's a little wooden one that's above ground. Uh, so in there we put uh, shavings and hay that they use as their bedding, um, and then they'll rotate around the different holes every night or every few nights to make sure they've got a clean bed for the whole family. They'll all kind of squeeze into the same one and all sleep together every night. And it's also where they nest build if they're expecting any young and where the young would stay until they're quite a few weeks old. Yeah, so we do have a few around the group because in the wild, they wouldn't stay in just one hole. They would have several dug throughout a river. And that is because if you have any predators in the trees, such as birds of prey, for example, they can watch what's going on. They've got very good binocular vision. So if the otters are constantly going in and out of one area, they will know that. So what our otters actually do is they will actually move between the holes. So even when we do have our young pups when they're very much baby stage, you will quite often catch a glimpse of them being moved between the holes and that's for their security as well. But these guys are really, really important for the natural environment. So they do spend a lot of time in the water. So they are perfectly adapted for swimming. So they've got a very, very under -like tail. They've also got webs as well, which they can help swim around. And they do love to spend a lot of time, especially in their bottom pool, which is much, much deeper. But sadly, these guys, they do face a few threats in the wild. So what kind of threats are these guys facing? Uh, the main threat for these guys is going to be water pollution. So any kind of um, issues in their water system makes the fish die off or any kind of shellfish that they might find die off which in turn means that they've got more pressures to find resources for food. Um, it also just means that they're kind of ingesting things they shouldn't be ingesting and their populations are kind of being forced closer and closer together, which can cause conflict as well. Yeah, so sadly they do have a few threats, but there's things that which you can do to help protect by and love our otters. Not just this species, but also otters. Here we have otters in Edinburgh. You get them on the River of Leith. You get them around the canals in West Lothian. You even get them down at the Sea. So they are around us as well. So little things that you can do to help protect value and love our otters in this country and around the world is especially when it comes to rubbish. If you find rubbish or you're out and about for the day, just take that rubbish home because any rubbish which gets left, say at the beach or by the river, when it goes into the waterways, what eventually happens, it breaks it into microplastics, which can then start to implicate the ecosystem as well. So little things which you can do to help are just take your rubbish home, recycle it properly, and it means that it's not ending up in our waterways, which means that it's not just saving our otters, but hundreds of other species as well. But I think our otters are all enjoying their food, so we will leave the talk there. So thank you very much, David, for listening. Thank you, Elise, and thank you to our very, very noisy otters. If you do have any questions or anything you want to pop over and ask, feel free. But if not, do enjoy the rest of your day, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just a wee footage of this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> smells horrible. Yep. So this Ooh, is roach, which is a kind of um, kind of fatty fish. It's the same stuff the pelicans get that give them that kind of pinky colour. And then we've got horse meat. And then there's some kind of leftover meat. clam. Yeah, so horse meat just to kind of up their protein. Um, and also because it's something we have available here, we have we feed it to the lions and the tigers and stuff like that. So it's easy to. I've never heard of horse meat well. before, so that's why I was surprised. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah it's really quite hear. a common it kind of byproduct I mean, in the UK. It's actually something that humans can eat. Yeah. The reason that we actually don't, one of the reasons we don't oh, eat horse meat in the UK is because people like horses. Yes. That is, ah, like okay. nutritionally, I mean, I've never tried it myself, but like nutritionally, it's actually equivalent it's, to beef. It's really high it's protein, very low high fat, protein, it's low fat. It's good quality meat, meat, but the reason that we don't eat it in the UK is because people like horses. Yeah. That is it. There's a whole scandal with lasagna. Oh, yeah, that's good, that's good. We probably all have. In my country, is still eating actually. Yeah, yeah I'm, from Europe, I'm from yeah. Hungary, so uh -huh. yeah, it's quite yeah, it's Europe. Europe. Yeah. It's yeah. something that we just we just don't do here, but there's no reason. Yeah. It's just one of these like oh. But I think our horses here as well, because they're mostly pets. We yeah. tend to give them like medications yeah. and things like that, which yeah. kind of makes them uh -huh. not viable for. So, yeah. what are the sources of these horses? Are they like horse so farms? These, yeah, no, or they're they... not horse farms. These are just like. 
random ex racing horses things okay, like okay, that yeah. mostly okay. um, that are kind of at the end of their life yeah. and, okay. um, see that box you threw in there it said something like a wand on it yeah so that's our beans we get fine beans so it's just okay. the box that we get our beans in for okay, other animals yeah. so we just kind of try and reuse all the cardboard yeah, that we have to you know, make enrichment I was wondering if you're getting this yeah. other word from oh, Ryan no, 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 no. <laughs> no it's just a uh, kind of byproduct from our store so we try to reuse any boxes and things like that see one thing I'm noticing I'm trying to take footage but the otters don't really go into the water and they look often, beautiful, but is there a reason for that? These guys do, so kind of it kind of depends on the time of day. Um, like they're not they're what we call kind of a swimming species. otter like mm -hmm. you'd so find with um, like European it's otters it's or sea otters or things like that. Those would spend healthy, most of their so time in the water. These guys like the water, they like to go for a swim, but they mostly go for really short kind of high intensity swims and play and then they'll go and rest. So they're more kind of short bursts of energy and they wouldn't spend a lot of time kind of swimming around. How big can otter families get? Because you mentioned mom, dad, like recent babies, some children from some time ago. Three zero, three zero, thirty. So this is so one mother can have thirty kids. Not at once. So she have kind of multiple litter. Just gonna maybe pop them a bit more. Yeah, it's really sad because it breaks down. It's tiny, tiny plastic, and it doesn't. Um, find them eventually so we, we like to put them in boxes just to make yeah, it a bit more yeah, interesting it also helps we've got quite a few wild box. birds that we, yeah, we to get, we kind of minimize get their get interactions them, um so by putting it in things like boxes uh, it kind of helps yeah, so to yes, keep yes, things more even hi Okay, well, if you're down the canal, like you've got the canal nearby, 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 you've got the canal Tails. Not too bad. They don't tend to snatch it from each other. Got web feet. So there is one that went over to the box and then came back fairly quickly. And then there was one that I saw. First one leave. Wanted to go after it, but no one else would come with it. He was like looking more to it. Yeah, it's nice to have them, because um, they are getting more and more protected, and obviously things like pollution, they're trying to sort out the sewage problem in the UK, it's a billion, billion, billion dollar problem, because um, unfortunately with a lot of urban development, <laughs> Like, even like around Edinburgh, around West Lothian, especially like the town I live in, it was literally multiplied about four times in size. And that's all going to have a reputation for the time. Yeah, yeah. So, we'll do a little bit even this little thing that doesn't seem like you should pay for your rubbish home. I know, absolutely. Because it gets the thing just properly. It's a bit of sugar, it's a bit of sugar. They are. Oh yeah, so these are the same kind of ones that live in uh, Singapore. Singapore, okay. Where are the otters in that live here? Because I've seen a couple on the yeah, river. Yeah, they're, 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 they're different family. They live in family groups. Ah. Uh, they're, they're the more solitary ones, but this is the species that lives all together. And they've only stuck to that one pond. I'm just in the second like side of the enclosure. They've not really wanted to come here.